Hi, and thank you for participating in this aircraft safety briefing for medical personnel. In accordance with Federal Aviation Administration Regulation 135621, this briefing is required in order for you to perform as a medical person on board a Metro Aviation Incorporated aircraft. This briefing must be viewed before a medical flight or at least within 30 days prior to a flight for persons that have not received the eight-hour annual training session. The regulation requires the operator of the aircraft to brief you on the following areas. Patient loading and unloading, physiological aspects of flight, safety in and around the helicopter, in-flight emergency procedures, emergency landing procedures, emergency evacuation procedures, efficient and safe communications with the pilot, operational differences between day and night operations. Let's start with patient loading and unloading. This may be accomplished with medical or flight crew members that accompany the aircraft. You already may be knowledgeable on loading the aircraft or you may need instruction on how to load or unload a patient and or equipment. If you are not knowledgeable as part of the flight team, you may still be asked to assist the pilot and or flight personnel in patient and equipment loading and unloading. Follow their directions. Loading or unloading patients or equipment at an aircraft can be difficult and awkward. Speak up if something doesn't seem right or you don't understand what is happening. Physiological aspects of flight. Flying is about increasing our altitude to avoid the obstacles on the ground that would slow us down. Once we leave the ground, we have less oxygen available to our bodies. At greater altitudes, this can lead to hypoxia. Hypoxia or a state of oxygen deficiency in the blood can cause impairment of body functions. Symptoms of hypoxia include rapid breathing, cyanosis, poor coordination, lethargy, and poor judgment. If you or fellow crew members exhibit any of these symptoms, notify the pilot immediately. Other issues that can occur during flight include the effects of trapped gases in the body that can also cause discomfort and possible injury. No one that has been scuba diving should be exposed to significant changes in altitude within 24 hours of the dive. Additionally, sinus issues can cause ear blockage that may be resolved by using the Valsalva maneuver. The pilot or medical crew can demonstrate the Valsalva maneuver if you are not familiar with it. If you experience pain due to ear blockage, notify your pilot. They can climb or descend until the pain subsides and you are able to clear the blockage. Waiting until you are on the ground can cause hearing damage. Noise and disorientation can also affect the body in flight. Also be aware that because of the three-dimensional nature of flight, spatial disorientation can occur. Avoid flying if you are sick and be careful of self-medicating. Due to the noise vibration in the confined space, aircraft can exasperate an illness or affect your reaction to drugs to the point where you may find it difficult to do your job. Notify your pilot if you feel unwell during the flight. Safety in and around the aircraft. With all aircraft, be careful around moving or potentially moving parts. The tail rotor of many helicopters and the propellers of airplanes are very dangerous. Jet aircraft can also be dangerous if loaded with the engines running. Never approach a running aircraft without a clear signal from the pilot or crew. Follow crew member directions and ask if you have any questions about your safety around the aircraft. Be sure to wear proper hearing protection in and around the aircraft. The crew should provide you with a helmet or headset to both communicate with and protect your hearing. It's a good idea to supplement those with earplugs. Ensure that all loose articles of clothing and equipment are secured and will not be sucked into engine intakes or blown away by the rotor system. If something does get blown away from the aircraft, don't chase it. It is too easy to run into a turning rotor or propeller while you're chasing something. Around running helicopters, don't put your hands or anything else above your head when near the aircraft. Bend at the waist if approaching a running helicopter and only approach from the 10 or 2 o'clock positions, never from directly in front or behind. Stay away from the tail rotor area of all helicopters. The pilot or crew will brief you on the operation of the doors and emergency exits. Seat belts and shoulder harnesses are required for takeoff and landing and recommended to remain on throughout the flight as much as possible. Efficient and safe communications with the pilot. The pilot will ask if everyone and everything is secured prior to liftoff. Be sure that your seatbelt is fastened, equipment is secured, and doors are closed at this time. During the course of the flight, there will be times when only aviation essential communication will take place between the medical personnel and the pilot. This period is called sterile cockpit procedures and takes place during takeoff, landing, instrument flight, and an urgent or emergency condition on board the aircraft. During these times, only essential aviation safety and operations communications will take place. No non-essential communication is permitted. 
Once the pilot has confirmed that sterile cockpit procedures are no longer in effect, non-aviation communication is permitted. In-flight emergency procedures. As in any vehicle or aircraft, there is a possibility of a malfunction interrupting the flight. In the unlikely event that occurs, remain calm and wait for instructions from the pilot or medical crew. Most emergencies only require a precautionary landing. That will generally require a maintenance procedure to return the aircraft to flight. Usually, alternate transportation will be arranged to complete the transport. In some cases, it may be necessary to suspend patient care as much as possible for your safety. It may be necessary to turn off the oxygen supply from the aircraft. The pilot or crew should inform you if this is necessary. Emergency landing procedures. In the event of an emergency, the pilot may elect to land the aircraft at the nearest suitable location. This may require an unusual landing procedure such as sliding an aircraft on the runway for a helicopter or a gear up landing for an airplane. These are rare but possible situations. The pilots do receive substantial thorough training on these procedures and practice them at least annually. If you're in a situation that will require an unusual landing, follow the pilot's instructions on tightening seat belts and assuming the brace position if necessary. In the event of an emergency landing, ensure all equipment is secured so it will not become loose and airborne on landing. Stay buckled until rotors have stopped turning and or the aircraft or airplane has stopped moving. In any aircraft, do not exit the aircraft without first checking the area immediately outside of the exit for hazards to include fire. You may be conducting a night flight. If so, let's discuss the operational differences between day and night operations. Just as there are differences between daytime driving and night driving, there are differences between day and night flights. At night, visual acuity is affected and this can lead to a pronounced tendency for spatial disorientation. Daylight can also cause visual acuity issues primarily because of glare, which can also cause disorientation. In helicopters, the pilot and assigned medical flight crew may be using night vision goggles. In order to avoid interfering with their night vision, only use flashlights with their permission. Main rotors, tail rotors, and propellers will be harder to see at night, so be aware of your surroundings. As always, the safety of the crew and patients is paramount. If at any time before, during, or after the flight you do not feel comfortable about any aspect of the flight, please notify your pilot. This can include the operation of doors, seat belts, emergency exits, or weather conditions. The pilot will ensure that you are comfortable before flight continues or terminate the flight if necessary. There is one more required briefing at the aircraft. The medical crew or pilot will also cover the basic passenger briefing that meets the requirements of Federal Aviation Regulation 135117. That briefing includes no smoking aboard the aircraft, proper use of safety belts, seat backs will always be in the full upright position, how to open the doors and use emergency exits, survival gear, ditching procedure and the use of flotation equipment if the flight is over water, location and operation of fire extinguishers. Thank you for participating in this briefing.